One of my new favorite things to do is to cut out my own letters, words, or embellishments that I use in DIYs out of chipboard. Oh my word, I'm gonna say I'm obsessed with this and today I'm gonna show you just how easily you can do it too. Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose. Yes! In the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What do I have going on for you for today? Well, today I'm getting together with Cricut and I'm gonna be showing you just how easily you can cut out your own letters, your own words, if you wanna cut out embellishments, shapes, flowers. I'm going to be showing you just how easily you can do it using the Cricut Maker 3 and some chipboard. This may be my new favorite thing to do because the versatility of it is amazing. I've got myself a Cricut, so why not utilize it and cut out my own letters and words in any font, in any size that I want. Today I'm going to be showing you just how easily you can do it and I'm gonna help you navigate through Cricut Design Space. For those of you who feel like you're intimidated by it, there is nothing to be intimidated by. It is such an easy program to use, and I tell you, it really does leave creativity at your fingertips. So I'm gonna quit my yabbin, let's jump into it, and let me show you what I have in store for you for today's DIY. Did I tell you? Using letters made out of chipboard. Today, I'm making Allie a door sign for her room with her name on it and I am so excited at the outcome of this DIY. Let's get to it. Alrighty, so getting started, we're gonna head into Cricut Design Space. This is where all of the magic of creativity starts and happens. We're gonna go up here to this corner here, this green tab, it says new project. We're gonna go ahead and click on that because we are in fact starting a new project. Heading on over to this sidebar, you will see you have several different tabs and all kinds of fun things that you can use and add to your blank canvas here. I want to add text, so I'm going to go ahead and click on text and it's going to add a text box to my canvas. Now because I am a Cricut Access member, Cricut has made thousands of fonts and images available to me for unlimited use monthly, which is amazing. Up here you will see that there is font. We're gonna click on it and it's gonna drop down all of the fonts that are available. Now the fonts that are available through Cricut Design Space are the fonts that have an A for access. And so those are the ones that we're gonna stick with today. I've got a couple that are my favorites, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull those up. And because I know the name, I'm gonna go up here to the search engine and I'm gonna type in DTC. And the one I am looking for is brown sugar. That is one of my favorites. So I'm gonna click on that and just like that, it has brought it up. So just by clicking on it, you will then see that our text is going to be in this font. So with this one, I'm gonna go ahead and change the text to say Allison's name. Now that I've got her name all typed out, you will see that just by clicking on her name, you can highlight the box. You have one of two options. You can go to this arrow here, and just by simply clicking on this arrow, you can expand your image or your font to whatever size you want. Now, if you wanna click on the lock here, this is gonna allow you to actually change the shape 
of your text or even your image. You can elongate your image and make it longer like so, and or you can do both at the same time. You can make it longer and wider. I like it longer and wider. Now, if we go up here to size, you will see width and height and a lock. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that. This is a new feature that you now need to unlock it. So just by typing in 9.0, enter. I'm not super happy with how that looks, so I'm gonna keep this unlocked and I'm gonna make it just a bit longer so it looks a bit more proportionate. I also wanna add her middle name. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on text again and have a new text box brought in. But we're gonna type in DTC and this one is called October Daylight. And this is more of a script font. And so with this, I'm gonna go ahead and take that out and put rows. And you will see that it is all connected there. I was thinking though that I might want to add a couple flowers to her plaque that are elevated. So I'm gonna go over to image here and again, all of these images, would you look at that? 250,000 plus Cricut images are available to you for unlimited use with the Access membership. Now I'm gonna look for a basic flower. I don't want anything with too much detail. I think I like these right here. These are perfect, they're simple, and it is just what I'm looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And you will see here at the bottom that the image we clicked on is here at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Add to Canvas. I'm gonna make these just a bit bigger. Now, if you wanna separate them, you can just by simply clicking Ungroup, and then you can separate your flowers and work with them individually. So I think I wanna add a second one here. So by keeping this flower highlighted, I can go up to Duplicate here, click Duplicate, and it is going to duplicate our flower and I think I will go and look for a leaf. This is what I am looking for, something simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, add it to the canvas. Oh yes, this is gonna be perfect. And so this is something that I can add maybe to the side here. And so we've got 11 by 11 inches of chipboard to use. And so I'm gonna use it. Okay, I am happy with this. I am good and ready to cut this, but my font is in one color, my flowers are in another, and the leaves are another color. Now, if I leave it this way, it is going to separate each of these items onto a different mat, and I will show you what I mean by that. By clicking Make It, it's going to take us to the mats and how it sorts it. I'm using a mat today because I am using chipboard, I'm using a 12 by 12 mat, so I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And then you will see off to the side that we have Alice and Rose on one mat, we've got our leaves on another, we've got our flower on another, and our two flowers. I don't want it to be that way. This is all gonna be on one piece of chipboard. So we're gonna go back to our mat, and just by simply coming up here to color sync, if you click on color sync, it kind of separates each of the images and fonts by color so you can see exactly what image or what font is in what color. Now because I am using an 11 by 11 piece of chipboard, I want this to cut all at once. So I'm gonna click on my image, I'm gonna drag it up. I'm just gonna keep it all with the dark gray with Allison's name and you will see that it has now moved up. And I am gonna do that with each of the images because I want it to be all on the same mat. And you can very easily just do that with each of the images. All the images are the same color. I'm gonna make sure that I am clicked on the Maker 3 because that is the Cricut machine that we are using today. I'm gonna go ahead and click Make It. 
Again, it's gonna give us options. We need a mat because yes, we're using chipboard. So I'm gonna click on mat. A 12 by 12 mat is what we are using. I'm gonna click continue. Design Space has gone ahead and laid out my images and my font on this 12 by 12 mat. But keep in mind, our chipboard is 11 by 11. And so if we don't move our images and fonts around and disperse them a bit onto this mat, the end is going to get cut off and you can very easily move your images and fonts around on the mat. Design Space sets it up so you're getting the most out of your material it is that you're using. And so I'm gonna go ahead and move my items around. So now that I've got it all laid out the way I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. Design Space is now detecting through Bluetooth the Maker 3 once it has fully connected. There we go. It's gonna ask us to set our material. I'm gonna head on over here to browse material. You'll see up here that you have the capability of searching for whatever material it is that you're wanting to cut that Cricut actually has in their library. Under artboard here, without even having to search, you will see that there is a chipboard option for 1.5. Then you go down a bit farther and we've got a heavy chipboard 2.0. This is the one that I am going to use. The chipboard that I'm using is this one here by Cricut. Again, you can see it's the heavy chipboard 2.0. In this pack, you are getting five 11 by 11 inch sheets of chipboard. Up above here, it's saying that knife blade calibration is recommended. Do you want to calibrate your knife blade now? Now, typically when you put a new blade in, your machine will ask you if you want to calibrate it and that is the best time to do it. Because I have calibrated my knife already, there is no need to do so. If you haven't calibrated your knife and this is the first time you're using your knife blade, you just follow the prompts that Cricut Design Space gives you and it's pretty easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and click no. You'll see here that there is a warning and it says move star wheel all the way to the right. Make sure material is no wider than 11 inches, which we know our chipboard is, and is secured to a strong grip mat, which would be this purple mat here by Cricut. This is a strong grip mat. So this is the one that it is referring to. You're also gonna wanna use some masking tape for this. Because chipboard is a heavier material, well, it may move even though this is a strong grip mat. So to ensure you get a good, nice, even cut, you're gonna wanna put masking tape on all four sides of your chipboard. Now it is telling us that we need to replace our fine point blade with a knife blade. This here would be the knife blade. It does come with its own housing unit. So when replacing the blades, this blade is one that you need to replace the entire housing unit. Cricut is prompting me to go ahead and load my mat and my chipboard into the Cricut Maker 3. Now I'm safe to go ahead and replace my blade with the knife blade. This is the knife blade, so I'm going to go ahead and take the safety cap off and place it into clamp B. Now when doing this, you really want to support your clamp and not put a lot of pressure on it and you want to hold that unit up so you don't break that piece there. We are good to go. I'm gonna press play or go. And now the Cricut Maker 3 is gonna do what it's supposed to do to this chipboard. And let me tell you, it is amazing. We are now ready to see the magic of this amazing machine cut through chipboard. Not only can we see the progress of the cut, but it is telling us that it is on cut one of 24 passes. That means that it is going to go over our image 24 times with the knife to cut through that chipboard. Let me take a minute to tell you a little bit about this amazing machine. The Cricut Maker 3 both looks and feels like a more premium Cricut. The textures that are used on the outer plastic of this machine feel so nice. The Maker 3 is an excellent digital cutting machine, a polished product that has the potential to work with a wide variety of materials. It's also easy to use. 
The Cricut Maker 3 cuts up to speeds two times faster, if you can believe that, than past generations. But cutting isn't the only thing that the Maker 3 does. It has a few more tricks up its sleeve. Drawing, scoring, debossing, engraving are more of the amazing features that the Maker 3 can do. Not to mention those specific cuts enabled by some of the more exotic blade tools. And if you want to draw or write, well, you can do that too using the Cricut Maker 3. It's creativity at your fingertips with this amazing machine. So how long exactly does it take the Maker 3 to do 24 passes over an image like this one? Well, it says an hour and 13 minutes after 37% of it has been cut. Really, all in all, it took a total of an hour. I set my machine, let it cut, went and cleaned some house, came back, and it was good after about an hour and ready for me to proceed on with my DIY. Once it is done cutting, the Cricut Maker will signal you to go ahead and release the mat. You can see that it has cut. Let's see if it's cut through the chipboard. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the masking tape and you'll see that the masking tape comes off fairly easily, not damaging the mat, so you're still able to use your mat. It's just really, just to keep that chipboard in place so your cuts don't come out uneven. You can see just how perfectly this cut, just by lifting up that chipboard, it really does release most of the letters and the images. The ones that stayed in the chipboard, they really did just pop out pretty easily. I'm making Allison a plaque for her door. This round one will do. You can find it at Dollar Tree. The back side, it's a blank canvas. So that's the side I'm gonna use. To this side, I'm gonna give it a good couple coats using some of Hello Hobbies dark brown. This is a nice, rich espresso brown that I just love. I was actually really loving the color of the chipboard for Allison's name, and so I decided just to kind of stick with that. Still wanted to put a coating of paint on there just to seal that chipboard, so I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's Hazelnut. How fun is this? I am loving the letters and the flowers. These images are so fun, cutting them out with chipboard. It might be my new favorite thing to do. These two need some paint. So I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's Pumpkin for this flower here. And it's gonna take a good couple coats because that chipboard really just sucks up the paint. And these two flowers here, they're gonna get a couple good coats using some of Waverly's Maze. And my favorite green by Waverly would be the fern for the leaves. The leaves, I want to keep it simple, but I also wanted to add just a bit of detail to them. And so I think just by keeping a simple line right down the middle, it does what it needs to do and it gives the effect that I'm looking for. Most of you know I like my stitching and with this DIY, it would be no different. Without stitching, I just feel like a piece like this flower is missing something. It looks much too plain to me. And because I love that country quilted handmade look, I feel like that's what stitching does. So I'm gonna go ahead and add stitching to all three of my flowers. I thought I could get away with not putting stitching on the leaves, but you see what I'm doing. It definitely needed it. I'm thinking the perfect center to these flowers would be just a wood button. I did, I tried. I really tried not to add stitching to Allie's name. I placed everything on the plaque and as I'm looking at it, I'm just thinking, no, her name needs stitching. It all needs to tie in together and I love stitching. Now, if stitching isn't for you, you don't have to add it. These DIYs are such versatile pieces and really I am just bringing you the concept, the idea of the DIY and in this video, teaching you how to use the Cricut Maker and Cricut Design Space. And so it really is about getting creative and making it your own. I like to lay my pieces out on my board before gluing them so I really know how to space things out, where the placement should be. And the glue that I like to use is either this wood glue by Crazy Glue or even an Aileen's Tacky Glue would work. I don't like to use hot glue for a piece like this because once you put that hot glue down, you're kind of in it. Your letter is pretty much stuck or your flower is stuck and you don't have the capability 
of moving it around and tweaking it just a bit. When you use a glue like this, you kind of have an area there, a window open, where you can actually move your pieces around and really get them in those perfect spots. And so I definitely suggest using a tacky glue instead of a hot glue when gluing down these pieces. I knew the edges of this plaque needed something to finish it off. I really was going to go the route of using some Dollar Tree's ribbon lace. Ended up not liking the look of it at all. And so when all else fails, yep, I'm a creature of habit. I'm gonna go with the stitching. Here it is with stitching and without. You choose. This was such a fun piece to create using my Cricut Maker 3 and chipboard. How easy is it to cut out chipboard, cutting out your own letters, your own embellishments? Simple and look at the outcome of this DIY. I really, really love the outcome of this sign. I love that I can implement some dimension into a DIY using chipboard letters and embellishments just by using my Cricut Maker 3 and something as inexpensive as chipboard. If you've got a Cricut in your closet that you haven't taken out of the box, you need to pull that thing out and you need to use it because it is an amazing machine. I couldn't be happier with the Cricut Maker 3. I love this machine and all of the things that it can do with it. Cricut, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. I love this machine and hands down, it is one of my favorite crafting tools to use. I hope you all enjoy today's DIY name plaque for a door, door name plaque. Well, this. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, well, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please. And bye for now, everybody.